Hey there, I'm Re. this is Drake. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. It's great to have you practice with us again. This class is yoga basics. So the class is aimed at anyone who has never done any yoga at all. Or maybe you've done a couple of the sleep classes on the channel, um, but you are an absolute yoga beginner. So the class um, is intended to give you um, some of the foundations that you will need so that when you start to um, take more yoga classes, whether they're beginner classes or even mixed ability, you're going to be moving through uh, postures that you're familiar with in terms of the name, um, what it looks like, but more importantly, what it feels like in, in your body. So not really suitable for somebody that's attended lots of beginner classes and now starting to go into mixed ability and feeling like pretty confident on the mat. This is more for proper beginners. You're not going to need anything for the class apart from you and your yoga mat and maybe a yoga buddy if you have one. So come to sit um, on the shins, have the butt back onto the heel or sit cross-legged if this isn't comfortable for you. Feel free to tuck the toes under, making sure you also get like the, the baby toe because that one tends to just do what it wants. Uh, if this feels too strong on the toes, uh, which it might do, this is quite a big stretch, then no worries, just untuck the toes. So we'll spend the first few moments just settling in. Um, the real big difference for me with yoga and other kind of stretching or um, kind of Pilates movements is really that we're not performing yoga unless we're linking uh, the breath to the movement. So it's always pretty nice just to start the class, taking a few moments to just kind of tune in. So close down the eyes, the hands can just be on your lap, wherever they're comfortable. Send the shoulder blades down the back. We tend to sit a little bit kind of hunched. Um, so just try and open the shoulders back and down. So you create a bit of width across the collarbone. Relax the jaw. Relax the space between the eyebrows, the third eye space. See if you can even relax the ears. Just send everything down. Take a few nice deep breaths here. Throughout this practice, we'll try and breathe in and out through the nose. If that's just not gonna work for you today, then just breathe through the mouth, that's cool. Just start to notice um, how the breath is feeling. Can you feel the belly kind of expand as you inhale or are you breathing more into the top of the chest? If you are, see if you can just breathe a little bit deeper on those inhales, take in a little bit more oxygen, send it all the way through the chest and into the belly. On the exhale, start to draw the belly back towards the spine, encouraging all of the air to expel that you don't need. Let's take a couple more. Nice. If you close the eyes, you can blink them back open, come back into the space. If you did tuck the toes under, now might be a good time to untuck them because it can feel a bit intense to stay in this place for a while. From here, take your left hand out towards the left and then see if you can just lift the right arm up and start to bend. So you're gonna take a little bit of a side bend here. So just keep crawling the fingertips over as you bend over towards the left. Really gentle, we're not doing anything crazy. You can turn the chest up towards the sky, turn your gaze, the drishti as we call it in yoga, up to the ceiling or the sky. And then switch sides. So bring in the right hand down, 
lifting the left arm up and over. You can walk the fingertips out. You can come down flat onto the palm. Just feel that lovely side body stretch, turning the torso up towards the ceiling. It's not gonna turn all the way, but just send it in that direction. Lift the drishti, so the gaze. Really breathe into that stretch onto the left side body. Take an inhale. Take an exhale, switch sides. We'll do it one more on each side. See if you can just stretch a little bit further now. Imagine you're trying to reach those right fingertips all the way over for something. Imagine you're trying to turn the chest to face upwards. And then exhale, come all the way back. And let's just do this other side one more time. Thinking about really grounding the butt onto the heels, thinking about really turning the chest up. Nice, come all the way back up. From here, as you inhale, start to turn and look over the right. So you're looking over the right shoulder, but maybe take the gaze a little bit further behind you. Exhale, bring it back into the middle. Inhale, let's go to the left. Notice if you can take the neck kind of a bit further around on one side than the other. Exhale back into the center. One more each side, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, nice. From here, inhale, look down. So chin is going to the chest. As we exhale, come all the way back up and just slowly start to lift the gaze right up to the sky. Any neck issues, just be really careful here. We don't want your head to like drop off. Nice. Inhale back to center and come down. Exhale. Nice, come back to center. Give the shoulders a little bit of a shake. Give the hands a little bit of a clasp. Shake the wrists out. So we'll be on the hands quite a bit today as we work through some of our basics. So it's nice to just give them a little bit of a warm up. And then come on to all fours which you will hear referred to as tabletop. So all fours, start off by having the hips directly over the knees and then taking the hands, sort of really spreading the fingers here and making sure that the wrists are tracking underneath the hips. Untuck the toes. If you did have the toes tucked under for a while there, it might feel nice just to tap the toes down. So really grip into the mat here and try not to check out. So by that, I mean, try not to kind of let everything sag and maybe have a slight bend, you know, sit up or push up out of the mat and start to engage the belly. What does that mean? You hear people say engage the core a lot in yoga as well. So when I say engage the belly, I really just mean sort of drawing the navel in and up. You'll notice a difference then and it's actually quite hard to maintain that for long periods. You're firing up the abdomen. So tabletop position. From here, we'll take some flowing movement, cat-cow positions. So as you inhale, start to lift the tailbone up towards the sky. The belly sinks low. The shoulders slightly retract in towards each other. The gaze lifts, the drishti lifts. This is cow posture. Then as you exhale, we'll reverse it. So slowly now start to uncurl and tuck the tailbone under. P push up, <laughs> puff up into the shoulders, the shoulder blades retract, and then take the chin in towards the chest. So you're creating this cat position. Inhale, reverse it. So tailbone lifts up, the chest lifts, the belly drops, the shoulders slightly draw towards one another, the gaze lifts. Exhale, back to cat. Round the chin into 
the chest, tucking the tailbone under. We're really pushing the mat away with the fingertips to spread the shoulders as much as we can. One more round of each, inhaling, come all the way back through and exhaling. So do you, you see this a lot in vinyasa yoga classes. It's a nice way to just wake up the spine and then come back to neutral. Cool. From here, tuck the toes under, sit back onto the heels and actually untuck the toes, come all the way down. We'll take a quick child's pose first here, Balasana. So crawling the fingertips away from you and then sending the butt back towards the heels. Don't worry if they don't go all the way back and then lower the forehead down towards the mat. So you've got the chest now laying onto the thighs. You can also just take the hands kind of behind you and have the arms alongside the body. It's really your choice. Obviously, this one is less intense on the shoulders. This is a resting pose, uh, as is described in lots of yoga classes. So you'll often take a child's pose after any vigorous movement or just to start the class. I don't think I've ever heard it referred to as Balasana, but that is the Sanskrit name. Take a couple of nice breaths here. As you inhale, feel the belly push into the thighs. And as you exhale, feel that you've created a little bit of space, maybe sink down a bit deeper. Inhaling. And exhaling, move into that space. Nice. From here, lift the head. If the hands were alongside you, take them out in front of you. Now tuck the toes under. I was getting a bit ahead of myself just then. And then start to press into the feet to lift the hips. So we've now got weight into the hands and into the feet. So this is Ardho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, as you'll hear it referred to. And the aim is not to get the heels to the mat. That is just a consequence of increasing the flexibility in the body. The aim is to actually have a nice long spine so that looking at me side on, the spine should look a little bit like a ski slope. The aim is also to tilt the tailbone upwards so that the sit bones are pointing up towards the sky. And to do that, you may need to pop a little bend in the knees. As soon as you do that, you release a little bit of tightness in the lower back, and then you should have a bit more of a ski slope look. Let the head hang heavy. So we'll talk a lot through the class about point as in downward dog, but for this first downward dog, just spread the fingers nice and wide, grip the mat. Turn the heels out slightly. That's just going to release a bit of space in your lower back. Let the head hang heavy and gaze through the legs. Keep sending the tailbone, the sit bones up towards the sky. This is your downward dog. Nice. From here, inhale, look forward. We'll walk up to the top of the mat. So you may need to take a few steps all the way up, or you may be able to just look forward, take one foot up and then the other. We're taking the feet in between the hands and we're bringing the big toes to touch. From here, keep a deep bend in the knees and then let the head go, slowly come all the way up to standing. So, we're now coming into starting the standing kind of phase of any class. So bringing the big toes to touch, taking the hands down by your side, releasing the butt. So we tend to clench the butt uh, in yoga classes when we stand. So just release the butt cheeks. You don't need to hold on to them. Taking the hands down by the side. So really spreading nice and long across the shoulders. So open through the collarbone. Hands can be down by the side or you can turn the hands out to face the top of the mat. Hands down by the side and in towards the sides is known as Samastiti. That's very much an Ashtanga um, posture for standing at the top of the mat and Samastiti means um, like an, an equal standing pose. 
Um, whereas Tadasana mounting pose, um, you'll see in lots of vinyasa or ashtanga, uh, sorry, <laughs> ayanga classes. And that is very similar, but you'll have the palms turned forward. So you've got that rotation there through the forearms. I am ashtanga trained, <laughs> so I'm usually samastiti. So lift all 10 toes up off the mat, look down. Really lift them up and then just start to lower them. That just encourages us to get that nice little archway in the foot on the inside and the little tiny arches we have on the outside of the foot. Working our way up the legs, just start to rotate the thighs in towards each other slightly. That's just gonna lift the kneecaps a little bit and turn on the legs. As you're standing, what's really common is that we stand with either the tailbone lifting, so we create this little back bend, or we, we kind of lean back a little bit and we protrude the hips forward. Um, so we, we want neither really when we're standing um, in Samastiti. We want to really tuck the tailbone under. That creates nice and length through the lower back by lifting the pubic area. So it's a, it's a two-way movement. I'm lifting the pubic bone, I'm tucking the tailbone. And that then keeps the pelvis area nice and neutral. Relax the shoulder blades down the back. Close the eyes. Just take a couple of breaths here, just feeling what it feels like to let go of the senses of sight and just feel what it's like to stand here. Notice if you're swaying a little bit, it's, it's nigh on impossible to be completely still because we're just vibrating all the time as, as creatures. So just notice how this feels. You can take the hands together so that the palms meet at the center of the chest and then lightly push the thumbs into the chest bone. This is a yoga mudra called Anjali Mudra. Very famous um, hand position in yoga. Lower the shoulder blades down. See if you can reach the crown any higher towards the ceiling without lifting the chin up. Blink the eyes open. So we'll work through Sun Salutation A, Surya Namaskara A. Uh, this or a flavor of this is in pretty much like every yoga class you're gonna go to that's a, a flowing class. So take the hands back down the, by the side, Samastiti. Inhale, raise the arms up to a diagonal. The gaze will lift the drishti. Again, if you started to take that back bend, so the booty has gone up, then just tuck the tailbone under. If the shoulders have started to hike up, that's fine. It might just be tightness in the shoulders. Just lower the diagonal, uh, lower the intensity of the hands. As well, if having the fingertips touching is, is really too tight on the shoulders, then release the hands, that'll come in time. This is Urdhva Hastasana. Then exhale, bring the palms together, bring them through the center line, start to tilt forward, bend the knees, drop the hands either side of the big toes, lift the tailbone up towards the sky. So we want the belly on thighs. We want to make sure that we're tilting the tailbone up. So we don't, we don't want to sort of bend so much that we have the tailbone tucked. We want to keep a nice soft bend, have the tailbone lifting up to the sky, let the head hang heavy. Fingertips either side of the toes. This is Uttanasana or forward fold. Then as you inhale, start to lift the gaze, the drishti, start to straighten the legs and bring the fingertips to the shins or the thighs. It, it may be the thighs if you're feeling quite tight in the lower back. And we're trying to kind of come halfway. This is Urdhva Uttanasana or halfway lift. Uh, you'll hear this referred to. As you exhale, bend the knees, take the hands down to the mat. We'll take the right foot back and then we'll take the left foot back to meet the right, coming into our high plank. That might not work. You might take the left, uh, the right foot back and then not be able to take the left knee back. If that's the case, drop the right knee, take the left knee back to meet the right, tuck the left toes under, then push up into this high plank. So 
Plank pose is the preparatory pose for Chaturanga Dandasana, which is the movement. So in this posture, um, what we don't want is the booty lifting and kind of looking up. So we're creating this arching in the back, which we don't want. We want the tailbone to tuck. We also don't want to sag too low and kind of lift up so that we, we have this um, pressure on the lower back. So this is a tough posture, but we want the shoulders to be over the wrists. We want to push back into the heels, turn the heels out slightly, suck the belly in and tuck the tailbone under. Then from here, as you exhale, drop the knees down, untuck the toes. We're coming into Chaturanga Dandasana. So from here, send the chest forward, keep the tailbone tucked, keep the gaze, the drishti forward. And on the exhale, start to bend the elbows back. By that, I don't mean elbows go out to the side like wings. The elbows draw back and slowly lower everything down. Everything meets the mat together, so chest and thighs in one line. From here, you come all the way down to the mat, chaturanga. Then as you inhale, start to peel the chest up from the mat. Keep the elbows tucked nice and in towards the body. You can keep a bend in the elbows here. This is a modification of upward dog or um, our Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Lower the shoulders down the back. As you exhale, draw the chest back down to the mat. Tuck the, to uh, the toes under. Start to pop a slight bend in the knees. Push back to the butt. We're not going to hang here. But then we're going to use a little bit of push to come all the way up. So we lift the hips up and we come back into down dog. You saw me step my feet in there. That's, I'll, I'll do that if we're going to be in down dog for a long time or for a few breaths. Again, you might bend the knees here so that you've got that lovely, smooth ski slope looking back, spreading the fingers. Now look forward at the hands. Now, ideally, we want the middle finger to track forward. So the middle finger is going towards the top of the mat. If when you do that, you have a little bend in the elbows, that's fine. That could be just tightness um, in the shoulders or it could be a problem with the wrist. Then you'll just turn the hands slightly so that the first finger points forward. That should relieve a little bit of pressure on the shoulders and allow you to keep the elbows nice and straight. But we're aiming for the middle finger. What we don't want is to take the hands really so that they spin out. That's going to create pressure in the shoulders. So have a play with that and make sure that you've got what you is, what is going to be the best down dog for you. Turn the heels out slightly, bend the knees if you need to, let the head hang heavy, the drishti is going between the legs. Ardha Mukha Svanasana or down dog. Nice. From here, deep bend in the knees, look forward. We're walking up to the mat again. So you can either take one foot and then the other or a few steps. If you took a few steps, just make it your little mission that next time you're gonna take less. Then from here, inhale, come into Urdhva Uttanasana, that halfway lift. So again, fingertips are on the shins or the, the um, thighs. Exhale, bend the knees, fingertips to the mat, fold over, the head hangs heavy, Uttanasana. Tailbone lifted. And then inhale, come all the way up to stand. The fingertips touch at the, the diagonal, Urdhva Hastasana, tuck the tailbone under. And exhale, the hands come down by your side, lower the shoulders down the back, Samastiti. Okay, so that's Sun Salutation A. We've done one, let's do two more. We'll do it a bit quicker now that you know where you're going. Inhale, lift the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, gaze lift. Exhale, palms come down the center line, fold over, bend the knees, Uttanasana. Really press the fingertips into the mat to send the sit bones higher to the sky. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the fingertips halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, right foot goes back, left foot goes back, your way. Find your high plank. Be solid in this plank for a moment, then exhale, drop the knees, untuck the toes. Tuck the tailbone under, send the chest forward, bend in the elbows, we're lowering chest and thighs together. Nice. Really 
zip those elbows in. Inhale, come into your modified upward facing dog. Exhale, come back to the mat, tuck the toes, soft bend in the knees, push yourself back, find your Ardha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths here, remembering to bend the knees, check out your dog. We want a nice clean dog here, and by that I mean we want to make sure that we are working the right bits of the body. That's really all alignment is about. It's just trying to make sure that we get the most out of the postures and that we're safe in the postures. Bend the knees a little bit, look forward as you inhale. See if you can step up with less steps this time. Continue the inhale, lift the gaze, lift the chest. Make sure the weight is across the whole foot here. Don't put all your weight back into the heels. Try and keep the weight spread across both feet. Exhale, bend the knees, Uttanasana, forward fold, press the fingers into the mat. Inhale, rise to stand, fingertips touch at the diagonal or above you, shoulder blades down, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands by your side, Samastiti. Nice, let's do one more. Inhale, arms sweep up, look up, gaze lifts, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, palms come down the center line, fold over, bend the knees, Uttanasana, let the head hang heavy, lift the tailbone. Inhale, halfway lift, Urdhva Uttanasana, weight across the whole foot. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, right foot to the back, left foot to the back, find high plank, tuck the tailbone under. Continue to exhale, drop the knees, untuck the toes, tuck the tailbone under, look forward, lift the chest, send it through. As you exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, everything meets the mat together, pin the arms in towards the body. Pin the elbows in towards each other. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Upward dog, variation. Exhale, the body comes down, tuck the toes, bend the knees, push back, and boom, into your downward facing dog, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Nice. So the movements should be getting a bit more familiar now. Make sure that you check that your hands are in line, you're spreading the fingers, you're turning the heels out slightly and the feet are hip distance. Send the tailbone up towards the sky, the sit bone is going, the sit bones are going up, up, up. Then bend the knees, look forward as you inhale, see if you can come up with as little amount of effort as possible. Continue the inhale, lift halfway, weight across the whole of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, Fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up to stand. Fingertips touch, shoulder blades down. Exhale, Samastiti. Release. Nice. So that was three rounds. Great. <laughs> From here, let's take a different type of movement. So inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold over, Uttanasana. Bend the knees. Inhale to a flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands down. Send the right foot to the back. Send the left foot to the back. Find your plank. From here, drop the knees, untuck the toes, zip the arms into the body, bend the elbows back. The elbows brush the waist as we come down, chaturanga. Inhale, lift, upward dog. Send the shoulders down the back. Exhale, back to the mat, tuck the toes. Push back. This time, try to find Balasana, child's pose. We've been here before. So you can untuck the toes. You can keep the hands out in front of you. And you can have the arms down along by the side. Tune back into the breathing. When we're learning new stuff or, you know, moving the body in ways that we're not really familiar with, often we hold our breath, which is really <laughs> uh, counterproductive in yoga. But if you were doing that, then just... Find your breath again, inhaling deeply through the nose, letting the belly fill, letting the chest fill, feeling it on the thighs. And as you exhale through the nose, move everything into that space, so sink a bit deeper. Child's pose. Nice, from here, lift up, come up onto sitting on the heels and then come off the heels and swing the legs out in front of you. 
Nice, I'll just come a little bit further up my mat. Okay, so taking the legs out in front. So the feet are together, we're zipping the legs in together, we are flexing the feet. Point, flex. Flexing is bringing all the toes back towards the shins. So take the hands either side of the hips, lower the shoulder blades down the back. Immediately you might be sitting and now starting to round. So I'm rounding into, so I've got a nice natural curve in the lower spine, the lumbar, which we all do. What happens is when I've got a bit of tightness, if we have tightness here in the hamstrings, they'll be pulling, the hips will be pulling or tightness in the hips, and then the lower back will start to round. So we come into this kind of rounded position and it can feel very hard to sit up nice and long. If that's you, pop a little bend in the knees and actually put as much of a bend in the knees as you need to. What we want is nice grounding through the sit bones, length through the spine, all the way up through the crown of the head. So if you're here, pop a bend in the knees. If you're not and you can have the legs straight, working in towards each other, flexing the toes, sitting up tall, great. But lots of people, this is really difficult. So if this is you, bend the knees. Take the hands either side of the hips. We're just using the hands to encourage the shoulders to lower. Take your gaze, your drishti, over the big toes. So no hiking the head up, and we don't want the chin in towards the chest. We're just creating nice neutrality in the spine here. This gaze allows us to keep the cervical spine, the neck part, nice and long. And most of the time in yoga, we're looking for length in the spine because daily life is very protracted, rounded, can be very closed in the front body. By finding length in the spine, we're elongating the spine, so looking after it, um, and also opening the front body more. This is Dandasana, or staff pose. From here, we'll take a forward fold. So as you inhale, sweep the arms up, really reach the fingertips up. Notice if the shoulder shoulders have started to hike up towards the ears. Send the shoulder blades down, really flex the toes. So keep inhaling. Then as you exhale, tilt forward, take the hands, see if you can take hold of the big toes with yogi toe lock. So first two fingers of each hand will wrap around the big toe of the opposite of its foot um, and then the, the thumbs will press into the big toe. So to do this again if you are looking like this and you can't connect the belly um, to the thighs that's fine just pop a little bend in the knees. We want the lowest rib or the belly to be on the thighs that way we know we've got length through the spine. From here, inhale, lift the chest, lift the gaze, straighten the arms, pull back onto the toes. As you exhale, start to bend the elbows, take the chest along the legs. So you'll hear me say this a lot in any of my classes. We're not looking to take, we're not looking for this, okay? So this is often what we see. Particularly, we'll see foreheads on knees, and then I've got my lower back very rounded, my upper back very protracted um, in the shoulders, and I'm not getting the benefit of these stretches. So really think about sending the chest along the legs. If that means you're bending the knees, that's cool. If you've been doing yoga a little bit, or you've got a strap in the house, or even um, like a bathrobe, belt, you could take that strap and sit up tall and then use the strap to send the chest towards um, along the leg. So we're lifting the elbows out to the side. The gaze is over the big toes. This is Pachimottanasana. So bending the knees if you need to, to get that belly onto the thighs. Really use the pull of the toes here. So the biceps, triceps, they should be engaged here as we use that pull and the push back from the big toes to take us further along. We'll take one or two more breaths here. Send the shoulders down the back. Then inhale. 
straighten those arms, lift the chest, exhale, release. Nice. Take this left foot, bend the left knee, take the left foot into the side of the right thigh. Keep flexing that right foot. This is Janu Shirshasana. I have no idea what it's called in English. Uh, it's uh, maybe hurdle pose, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. So the foot is not going under the thigh, the foot is just next to it and pressure from the thigh into the foot and the foot into the thigh. Ground the sit bones down. If your knee is not anywhere near the floor and it kind of looks like this, don't worry, that, that will open with time. That's just your body getting used to the movement. Really flex the toes in, especially the small toes. Um, we tend to turn the foot a little bit when we flex. So make sure we're flexing the whole foot back. Inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, again, we're tilting forward. This time we're clasping the hands around the back of the toes, so um, into the top of the foot. Again, if you are now very, very rounded in the lower back and protracting in the shoulders, so puffing through the upper back, then pop a bend in the knee. That's going to allow you to have length through the spine. Don't ever compromise the spine in yoga because you think you're looking for an aesthetic. So you've seen somebody forward fold like a pancake and you know everything's flat. Or you've seen somebody forward fold to get their, um, their head on their knee but they've, they've rounded. Don't worry about the aesthetic. Worry about listening to the cues from your teacher and worry about making sure that you're getting the most out of the pose. So by popping a bend in the knee, if the back is rounded, you're still gonna get the correct stretch in the hamstrings, which is what this posture is designed to do. Um, but you're not going to be doing that at the sacrifice of the, of the back muscles. So from here, inhale, lift the chest, straighten the arms. As you exhale, bend the elbows, start to send the chest along the leg, so you should have the belly connected now to the right thigh. Lift the elbows up, and again we're using the, the biceps, triceps to pull us towards the foot. Keep the drishti, the gaze, just above the big toe. See if on the exhales you can go a little bit deeper. Inhale, straighten the arms. Exhale, release, switch sides. So left foot is coming forward, flexing it. The right knee is bent, the right foot is going into the side of the left leg. Inhale, reach the arms up, look up, lift up. Lift up and out of the back. So not this, lift up. Exhale, tilt forward. Clasp hold of the toes around the back of the foot. Inhale, lift the chest, look forward. Exhale, bend the elbows, really working biceps, triceps, and send the chest along the leg. Lift those elbows up, keep looking over the big toe. This is Janu Shirshasana A. There are three, I think, there's, well, there's definitely two, I'm pretty sure there's a third, but this is Janu Shirshasana A. See if the exhales can send you further along the leg towards the foot. Bending those elbows deeply, we should be working the muscles in the upper arm. Send the shoulder blades down the back, send the shoulders away from the ears. One more inhale through the nose. One more exhale through the nose. Then to release, inhale, straighten the arms and release the foot. Take that right foot to meet the left. So from here, we'll do one more pose before we come down onto our backs. So take the soles of the feet to touch. So this is Baddha Konasana B. So if I turn to face you, I'm creating a little diamond uh, with the legs. So I've got my soles of feet touching and then the knees are just going outwards. This posture also will be seen with the foot, the feet right up uh, into the groin area. That's Baddha Konasana A. We may also hear this referred to as butterfly. So from here, take the hands onto the shins, lift up, inhale, look up, 
create that length that we've been referring to through your spine. Then as you exhale, just start to slowly crawl hands forward, lean forward. Don't worry about rounding in the back now. This is a passive fold over. So we're externally rotating in our hips, sending the knees outwards. We're keeping the, the feet together, the soles of the feet together. The fingertips are released. And if you want you know, more from this stretch, you can just keep walking the fingertips away from you. That's just going to encourage your chest to lower. This is Baddha Konasana. Your gaze is back towards your groin area, your drishti towards the groin. Couple of breaths here, relaxing the shoulders again. Don't let them hike up around the ears, really opening through them. Take an inhale, sit up, walk the hands back in. Exhale to release, nice. From here, bend the knees, take the feet flat to the mat. Take the hands either side of the body and just slowly roll down the vertebrae to the mat till you get the skull and the shoulders onto the mat. From here, take the feet as wide as the mat. Let the knees knock in towards each other. And then we'll windscreen wiper the legs. This isn't like a traditional yoga pose. It doesn't have a Sanskrit name, but it's just a nice thing to do after a bit of movement. So letting both knees fall to one side, bringing them back, letting them both fall to the other. Should feel quite nice on the lower back. This is nice to do if you've just been sitting a lot in the day, even if you've not done any yoga. This is quite a nice thing to do. Cool, then bring the knees in towards the chest. Start to separate the knees, take them out. Then take the knees forward. You've got the hands on the tops of the knees and you're creating circles. So knees come in, out, forward. Together, in, separate, out, forward, together. So just keep working that way. You can then bring the knees together, take both knees the same way. You'll have less, less movement there taking them the other way. You're just moving around on the lower back here. And then when you're ready, feet flat to the mat. Take the right foot to the right corner, left foot to the left corner. Let the shoulder blades go into the mat nice and heavy. Turn the palms up towards the sky. Tuck the chin in slightly and close down the eyes. This is the corpse pose, Shavasana. Take any breathing here. So we've been kind of guiding the breath through the movement. Now you're just gonna let the autopilot in the system take over and do the breathing for you. This is where the mind will start to wander. That's fine. <laughs> um, if it does, just try and bring it back towards the breath. So by that, I mean, you know, you could visualize the air coming into the lungs, into the belly, working around the body, and then visualize it being expelled, taking with it anything that doesn't serve you. If you've never taken any yoga movements before, then well done. And now just relaxing into the mat, let it all settle in. So let that energy that you've created just settle into your cells, your muscles, your bones. Relax the face. Let the skull feel heavy into the mat. Let the shoulders feel heavy. The back of the hips, the butt. back of the thighs, the calves, the feet.
start to bring a little bit of soft movement into the body. So just move in the fingertips and the toes. Maybe turning the hands in the wrists, the feet into the ankles. Taking the head over to the right side, taking it over to the left. Taking the arms up and over the head, straightening everything out. Take a big stretch here. Then bring the knees in towards the chest. Wrap the arms around the shins if you can. Hug it all in. You can take some rocks here from side to side if that feels nice. Try and keep the eyes closed. Try and have these last few moment, moments of mindfulness. Then roll all the way over onto the right. Come into a little fetal position. And then slowly find your way, any way, into a seated position. And this can be any seated position. It doesn't need to be legs crossed. It can be anything. Bringing the hands together in the center of the chest, back into Anjali Mudra, pressing the thumbs into the chest bone. Lower the shoulders down the back. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, let it all go. <sighs> Blinking the eyes back open, lifting the gaze, readjusting. Thank you for joining me for this yoga basics class. I hope you found it useful and that you come back for more classes on the channel. I'll see you soon. Namaste.